Well, praise the Lord. Praise it's the good Lord. To be in the house of God. Amen. 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 Welcome all over the world. Welcome all over the internet. All of our brothers and sisters on YouTube that watch our services and are part of our services and respond to us. And we're getting so many wonderful testimonies. Brother Terry down in Australia. Uh, everybody all over the world visit Jesus Hills Ministries uh, Brother Terry in Australia and you are going to see a latter day end time demonstration of the body of Christ ministry this man takes Jesus with you know and there's so many people growing their hair weird and piercing themselves and getting tattoos and, and doing all manner of things in their dress and their and their behavior to be so-called relevant to the world, uh, claiming they're taking Jesus to the streets. You watch this man of God who looks as, and Terry, if you, and I know you're going to watch this, don't be offended, but he looks as square and as middle class and as normal as Pastor TC does. And uh, I know I look weird to a lot of religious folks. I, I, I enjoy that. But... To the average person, well, look, you're just so plain, you can't relate to anybody. Well, uh, you don't relate to anybody by what you're putting on and, and how you adorn yourself after them. Amen. You relate to people by bringing Jesus to them. Because if it's just in how you look, how you dress, and how you act, all they've met was you. But their lives will change when they meet Jesus through you, not you. And, and Brother Terry man of God traveling all over the world, taking the miracle working ministry of Jesus to hurting people, just came back from Indonesia where signs, wonders, and miracles took place and taught, took, called me on the phone with great, incredible praise and worship praise God. Uh, testimonies of God's casting out devils. Hallelujah. And this man, folks, takes Jesus to the marketplace. He takes Jesus to the workplace. He takes Jesus to the streets. Not in how he dresses, but in the power of the Holy Ghost. Go to Jesus Hills Ministry and see the power of a New Testament church in action. A New Testament man of God in action. Amen. Without shame, without intimidation, preaching, proclaiming, and demonstrating the healing, delivering power of Jesus. It's incredible how God's using our brother. Brother Terry, stay strong. God's with you. It's incredible. And he's a blessing to Amen. us. Praise God. And uh, I know they're watching this all over Australia. And I encourage you to watch this mighty man of God walking with the Lord in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. He'll build your faith and he'll challenge you to do the works of the New Testament church. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here in this church, uh, we pray, we intercede, we do spiritual warfare uh, with prophetic utterance, with, with proclamations of the Lord, with declarations of God's Spirit. Uh, and it's even been confirmed today. Uh, we entered into the Spirit. I had a vision, and, and people in this church said, that's exactly what's going on Amen. in my family. That's what's going on Amen. in my dad. And that's what's going on. And just the... the, the, the full manifested glory of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Then in praise and worship, Sister Bree walking so deep into the spirit realm. Folks, this is a New Testament church. Uh, if you're anywhere near Dallas, you need to come be a part of this. It'll change your life. Amen. Uh, don't, bring, don't bring your preconceived ideas. Amen. Just bring a hungry heart, a thirsty soul, and your life will never be the same. Amen. 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 So let's give God another great day. Amen. Be seated. Hallelujah. I was getting ready uh, for service today. The Lord kept me up until about 3 30, 4 o'clock this morning. Uh, imparted to me, started speaking to my spirit about what he wanted to address the church. And uh, I sat down, it was in a different notebook, because God does switch up on me sometimes. Amen. Got my old Bible out with a bunch of 
How many of you know your Bibles become your best friends? Amen. And you've got certain Bibles where you can find everything in them. They're just your best buddies. And you know, I've even fallen asleep with my Bible. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. It's not a common at all. Darlene looks at me like, you're supposed to be hugging me. <laughs> I, I, I fall asleep with my Bible. I fall asleep on the couch with my Bible. I fall asleep in my in my chair with my Bible. I fall. I, I've taken Bibles to people's houses and fallen asleep with my. Bible. This is the greatest source of peace in my life. Is the Word of God. Amen. This is my dearest friend. Amen. Amen. The, the Word, the Lord Jesus, in print and in flesh, is my best friend. And it's very common for me just to be so comforted by the Word after I'm reading it, and, that, and I, I just hug the Bible. I can't. I can't hug Jesus in person yet. I can hug him, hug him in my heart. So I just take the word and I, because this is the word made flesh. This is Jesus. Yes. Amen. And I just hug Jesus in my heart. I, I fall asleep with Jesus in my heart. Hallelujah. And, and, Amen. And, uh, the Lord kept me up till. Uh, well, anyway, I had my best my best Bible, my best buddy Bible out, and I'm taking all these notes, and the Lord's speaking to me, and I took. Four weeks of teaching in about an hour and a half, two hours, just writing as fast as the Holy Spirit could speak, organizing them, sorting them out, and blocked out the four, the next four weeks of doing a, a teaching on God and governments. God and governments. And then I'm getting dressed this morning, putting on my tie. My shirt's not even tucked in. God said, I don't want you to teach that yet. <laughs> And I'm, what? You can't be up till 3.30 in the morning. He said, no, I want you to teach on this this morning and start that next week. So I go, okay. So I had to get a fresh notebook out and start writing down notes. And I'm sitting there half dressed as the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And he said, there's somebody out there. Listen, there's not somebody. There's always somebody out there God's talking to. Amen. Listen to me. For you young ministers, don't ever be moved by people's faces. Some of the most powerful manifestations of God is when people look at me like, are you kidding? And like they're talk, thinking about everything but what I was preaching. And then after the message, they say, yeah, never know how. See, a lot of people will zone out because the, the words of the Lord through you have just seized their heart. And, and their spirits are being dealt with by the Holy Ghost a thousand ways you can't tell. And it looks like they're daydreaming and God has got them by, the, by their soul. Amen. Amen. And some of the times the most powerful manifestations of God touching people's hearts has been when they look like they were daydreaming to me. Yeah. Amen. But they're just lost in the presence of God. God got a hold of them and started dealing with them. God. Don't ever be moved by people's faces. Don't ever be moved by whether they look like they accept you or reject you. Sometimes, I've, I've had, I had one guy, and I'm not talking about Tony because we used to laugh about that. He looked like he just wanted to punch me and beat me up. And then later on, he admitted, yeah, I used to want to punch you and beat you up. <laughs> well, praise God. But there was a, several times in other churches where guys looked at me like they, oh, like they just wanted to kill me. And uh, when I was a younger minister, I, I went up to one of them and said, brother, I'm sorry if I offended you. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to make you mad. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, you look like I was angry at you. He goes, what? I said, brother, you're looking right at me. Like, <laughs> He goes, no, bro, brother, you started preaching, and I got caught up in the Spirit, and God was showing me all this filth and sin in my life that I detested and I hate, and I can't stand it, and I was just angry with where I was at spiritually. Like, really? Oh, God. So God. He, he wasn't projecting anything to, to me. He was projecting something to God and dealing with him in the Spirit. Oh, Amen. 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 So don't ever be moved by people's faces. Just know when God tells you to say something, say it. Amen. 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 When God says you to tells you to share something, share it. Amen. Don't be moved by whether it looks like they received or not. Right. Some of the most powerful people that I know in, this, in the ways of the Lord right now started out in appearance being the hardest. Amen. Amen. We got one right here that's a mighty man of God. Hallelujah. I mean, a mighty man of God. I wouldn't, I, you know, I wouldn't share it for nothing. Some of the ones that look like they, 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 they're not receiving at all, God's dealing with the most. Amen. So when I say God's going to talk to somebody, he's always talking to somebody, whether I can tell or not, whether I discern that or not. Amen. Everything God tells you to share, 
you share. And a great testimony of that today in intercessory prayer. Isn't it amazing? We were talking about that, Sister uh, Christine and I. When, this, when you have a church where the Spirit of God moves, this makes no sense to a religious church. Remember we were talking about hungry people, religious people. Hungry churches, religious churches. And they really don't make sense to each other at all. Most people, when it's a man says, I've entered into the Spirit, this is what I see, and this is what's taken place, and it makes no sense to religious minds, and then this woman stands up and says, that's exactly what happened in a relative of mine. Amen. And I'll just tell you what it was to, to, to the world. We're not going to talk about who, what, where, when, but I had a vision. All of a sudden, I just saw a, a female, and there was this big blob of, of fleshy-looking stuff, and you got to just say what you see. What do you see, man of God? I see bones. What else do you see, man of God? I see a rod. What else do you see? I see a seething pot. Now, none of that would make sense to the man of God, but God's showing him stuff to put it together for a prophetic utterance to a nation. Oh, amen. So you just got to speak what God tell, shows you. Don't interpret it. Don't try to define it. Don't try to make it relatable. Just say, God's showing me this. Amen. And I amen. saw a big bloody, nasty blob in a woman's midsection fall out at her feet. And what I also saw was it was a big, bloody, messy blob. I didn't say the bloody part, but I said a big, fleshy, fleshy looking blob. Did try to explain it? And it's going to be replaced with the, with the, with the life of God. Amen. That was trying to steal her life. That's fallen at her feet, defeated. And the life of God's replacing it. That's thus said Lord. That's all I said. Amen. Makes no sense to me. Makes no sense to anybody else. And she stood up, and this woman stood up and said, There's this other woman had a massive blood clot fall out of her body. So, oh, oh, Praise God. God. I saw it just like a like a cam a Polaroid picture. So you gotta what do you see, man of God? What do you see, woman of God? Just speak it. Don't worry about it making sense. Amen. It was to the detail what this woman, other woman had gone through. Amen. Amen. I mean, to the detail. Praise God. It, 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 it's incredible and awesome to walk in the spirit realm with the yes. Holy Ghost. Yes. Don't, you can't walk there. Pastor Tony brought this out. You can't get into the things of God with your head. Amen. And this head will fight the ways of God. He yes. brought that out too. Yes. The flesh and the spirit war against each other. You just got to walk with the Lord. He'll tell you and show you exactly all you need to know. And he doesn't want to make you a doctor, a psychiatrist, or anything else. So he's not going to explain it to you, to you to explain it to somebody else. He just says, what do you see? This is what I see. You see well, now speak it. Praise God. It'll set right. somebody else free. Heal somebody over here. Send that demon running. Amen. Don't move by faces. Don't move by what's going on. Hear from God, see in the spirit realm, and say, thus saith the Lord, and leave it to that. Amen. Amen? Yeah. So right now, there's maybe thousands of people all over the world going to watch this service today, going to listen to this message, and it's going to touch something in their hearts, revolutionize something in their hearts. And I'll tell you right now, I know by the spirit of God, when, when I was writing this as fast as I could, because I'm going, God, i got 10 minutes to get dressed and be on my way to church. And he said, no, I want you to change your message. I had to start all over. Amen. So he, he imparted this to me in order in 10 minutes. Then I threw everything on and got here. And, and man, did we enter into the presence of God. Today. And Amen. still still the presence of God is here. Amen. 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 So we're going to look at, and I believe with all my heart, that the Spirit of God is going to bring a, some areas of revelation. Now, the scriptures you may already know. There's thousands of people out there. Well, I know that. I don't know. Well, that means that you, you haven't received what the Holy Spirit is trying to show you. When your brain kicks in, I know that. Before your heart can say, I received that, then you're already worried. That's true. Let me say Amen. it again. When your brain kicks in, the, 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 the response of, I know that, before your heart can say, I received that, then you're already fighting what God's trying to do. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Did you hear me? Yes, amen. All right. Perfect example of that was Jesus in the boat with Peter. Peter cast out 
and uh, we're gonna we're gonna go fishing together. Lord, I've already cleaned my nets. And it's late in the afternoon. I've fished all day. I've caught nothing. I even fished in that area you're pointing at. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll obey. So your natural brain will say, I know better than this, but your spirit says, I need to say yes to this. Amen. And that's that acted out. When your brain kicks in, I know that. Before your heart can say, I receive that, you've got a battle going on. Amen. 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 Nevertheless, just obey God. Yes. And it receive it. Amen. 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 So a lot of people know, that, as a matter of fact, there's great battles going on about this doctrine of grace. God said, I want you to teach on grace today. And people are going to say, I know that. Well, good. Maybe God's got something you need to receive, not know. Right. Amen. 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 So let's look at grace today. Look at John chapter 1. Glory be to Jesus. Lord Jesus. A lot of confusion in this area, a lot of excess in this area, and a lot of lacking in this area. Because you, we're going to look at this, you're going to say, my God, we, we've only looked at just a small part of grace. Amen. Amen. When I say grace, what, the, what enters into most brothers and sisters' minds? Do what they want. Pastor Tony? They can do what they want, how they want to, and God will forgive them. Now, isn't that wrong. sad? Isn't that sad when it's so prevalent that the answer to, and from the first row of this church, by the exposure of what they are talk, they're around, is that when you are talking about grace, it's usually from people that are using it to do what they want. Their own desire. Or what we call greasy grace. Just yeah. slide along. And God puts up with everything. That shows you right there. When that's the first response, that shows you there's something that's really not understood all that good about grace. Amen? Because it goes Amen. on later to say, use not the grace of God for an occasion to sin. sin. So there's doctrine to stop all that, but evidently the doctrine to stop it isn't being preached, so it can't be received. Amen. That's right. Did you hear me? Yes. Amen? What, what's the first thing you think of when somebody starts talking about grace? I, I don't really hear most people talking about grace, but the same thing that... It's that usually it's used as an excuse for a lifestyle? Usually, usually you don't, I feel like it's used when you don't understand or know what to say, so you just say, most people just say, well, God's grace, and yeah. it's usually yeah. Well, we're saved by grace when they don't know what to do or how to respond or what they're supposed to do. Amen? It's just kind of this cosmic catch-all to protect me and excuse me. Right. Does that sound fair? Yes. Right. Amen? Bree, what, what comes to you when you're in conversations, and how does grace usually brought up in the in the circles that, that you have in, in life? Pretty much to... Just picking a few people out here in the congregation. <laughs> Pretty much to do what they please. I mean... Now, isn't that sad? Because you run in completely circle, completely different circles than Pastor Tony, Amen. Sister Christine, and other people in this church. We all run. We all have our different types of of social influence. Why? Because each one of us have a personality that can only influence those that are in our circle. Amen. 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 But her circle, your circle, other circles, most of the time it's going to pop up as a as a defense barrier to their lifestyle. And a protection from condemnation or even conviction. Do you hear me? Amen. As a protection from conviction. Yes. So right there you need to understand this. Write it down if you don't understand the difference. Conviction is when the Holy Spirit comes on you and says, that's not right, you need to change. Condemnation is when the adversary, Satan, or spirits come and a and beat you down with the same situation. That's not right. And if you love God, which you don't, you, you wouldn't be doing that. So you might as well just backslide and go ahead and play in the world. Because you don't, God, God's not going to listen to you anymore. It starts beating you down to separate you from God. That's condemnation. Conviction showing where you're wrong. And then grace helps, jumping ahead of myself, grace helps you correct what is wrong to be more Christ-like. To bring you closer to God, not condemn you and drive you down and away from God. Amen. Amen. So if you don't understand the difference between conviction 
and condemnation. Every time God talks and pricks your heart, you'll, you'll say, oh, he's, he's condemning me. And then we come out with other doctrines that you can't judge me. Right. Now all of a sudden we're in a warring posture against the convicting power of the Holy Ghost trying to get you closer to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So if you don't understand the difference between conviction, well, conviction don't hurt. Oh yeah, it do. Yes, Lord. Conviction hurts me more than condemnation hurts me. Because I know the difference. When my heart's pricked by the Holy Ghost, I would rather take a beating than know that I've hurt God. I mean, I'd rather just drag me out in the street and start throwing rocks at me. That would hurt less than knowing God's upset with me. And not angry, but I've hurt him. I've hurt his heart. I tell people, they go, well, you're mad. No, I'm upset. There's a difference. You've never seen me mad. You see me upset. Amen? Amen. There's two times in my life somebody's made me mad. Both times I went to the hospital. Most people have never seen me mad. I pray to God I never get naturally mad again. Or naturally mad or angered in the flesh truly again. Amen. A lot of times we'll stand up here and preach, God's mad at you. you no, know, if, if God was mad at you, you'd be a cough drop. You, you, you would all already been history. Now you grieve God, you 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 agitate him, you 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 vex him, but the wrath of God's been removed off of you by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't understand all this, you're gonna fight the convicting power of the Holy Ghost, and we'll look at it here later. Basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna have this fighting posture frustrating God's grace. Amen. 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 Can I hear a hallelujah? Hallelujah. All right. So look, look at the first chapter of John. We're going to start at verse 4. And the Word was made flesh. I just talked about my best friend, the Word being made flesh. Amen? Hallelujah. And you're holding on your lap as Jesus. Have you ever thought of Jesus sitting on your lap? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you realize there's not one bit of difference between the written Word and the living Word? None of the paragraphs change. There are no paragraphs, actually. Not one jot, not one tittle, not one dot of an I or a cross of a T is changed in his flesh. He's the full Word of God, incarnate in bodily form. Hallelujah. This is Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the Word was made flesh and lived and moved and had his being dwelt among us, his created ones. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace, full of what? Grace. Grace and truth. truth. Now, where grace is, look at Pastor for just a second, listen to me, world. Where grace is, truth is. Amen. Even in the salvation of a lost soul. Grace is there to convict them of their sins, to bring them to God. The truth is, without you allowing that conviction, you're going to die in your sins. Amen. Amen. Wherever grace is, truth is. They live together. There's no such thing as grace and deception. Right. Amen. 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 Oh, that's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So every time somebody's comfortable in their sin, Tagging grace on it, that's not grace. That's fleshly permission deluding them into thinking God's okay with it. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Say it with me. In Jesus, In Jesus is the grace, is the grace of, God. of God. The grace of God was released to humanity in Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. Grace released to us. You don't deserve a Savior, but I'm sending one. You don't deserve a personal visitation from your God, but He's coming. God, God's grace is Jesus. While we were yet sinners, Christ, the grace of God, poured out to a sinful world, died for us. 
And in that grace is truth. If you don't accept Him, you'll die in your sins. You have to accept Him because you are a sinner. Yes. See, there's no such thing as grace being manifested without truth being there. So I'll tell you right now, just log that down. There's a whole bunch of people talking about grace that are in deception and are not in grace at all. Amen. Ooh. You better listen to that. There's a whole lot of people, the grace of God is manifested, but they have rejected the truth of the grace. They're in deception, thinking they're in grace, and they're still lost in their sins. Well, how do you know that? Because God came to show His loving grace to a sinful world, even full with adulterers, fornicators, and homosexuals, but that grace doesn't allow you to stay a homosexual. So if you're a homosexual practicing homosexuality in a church with a homosexual pastor saying, grace, grace, you're in deception and you never really have entered in to salvation. Because grace is always anchored in truth. They walk hand in hand. You can't have grace without truth. Amen. You must repent and be converted. Hallelujah. You must be saved. From what? From who and what you are now. Amen. So the truth is, without grace, you're undone. Amen. The truth is, without grace, you stay a sinner. The truth is, grace reveals that I'm a sinner, and now it's up to me to repent and come to Christ. Amen. Yes, Amen. Yes, Are you starting to see Amen. the difference? Good. Yes. Amen. Amen. So he was full of God's grace and full of God's truth. Hallelujah. Now watch this. Verse 15. John bore witness of him, the grace of God, and the truth of God, and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spoke. He that cometh after me is preferred and higher and more elevated and above me, before me, for he was before me. Who I'm preaching to you is one that made me. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Now look at verse 16. And of his fullness have all we received. Of his fullness of what? Grace and truth. Remember I said, if you, if, you, if you try to argue with God in your head, you can't receive his truth in your heart. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. Now this, watch. This, oh, what? This, he said, it says grace is truth. In this translation it says, um, I think it just says grace and grace. Like grace is yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting to that. Oh. Watch, watch, watch. <laughs> Praise God. And his fullness have we all received, and grace for grace. Oh, hallelujah. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So how, how did grace come? It's Jesus. And where grace is, there's truth, because that is Jesus. We received grace for grace. In other words, it is this. Here's the purest definition of grace, if I can get this straight to you. It is the manifested intervention and actions of God upon sinful man intervening into the affairs of their lives for their benefit when they're not aware of it and they don't deserve it. Grace is God acting for you before you even know it. Amen. Let me say it again. Grace is God taking the initiative because of His love toward you while you're yet a sinner and intervening into your life so that you might walk in the fullness of His love. So you receive, you, you have to receive what God starts in your life. He sent Jesus. Is it close? Is it close? Yes. So you've got to receive grace to get grace. Amen. You've got to receive that God stood from his throne and began to act on your behalf from a heart of love and grace to receive saving grace. 
Grace for grace. He moved by grace so that you can have grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that tells you right there, everything good and everything that will ever be good in my life, God started it. That's right. None of it's about me. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor Tony, read in the Amplified. John 1, 16. For out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and truth, Hallelujah. we have all received grace upon grace, spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. For the law was given through Moses, but grace, the unearned, undeserved favor of God, and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's grace. Amen. It's the grace of God shed abroad in our lives that we can receive the grace of God. Amen. But you've got to receive it. Not yet, yeah, but. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Now, look over at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Glory be to God. This is good already. Amen. The presence of God all over. See, God's not trying to hurt anybody. He's not trying to, to, to say, well, these grace people are wrong. They're not wrong. But folks, listen. I am a grace people. You're grace people. But we need to understand a fuller concept of grace so that we receive more grace. Amen. Because grace won't increase while you're rejecting it in, in error and lie. Grace walks with truth. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 2. Very familiar scriptures. Look at verse 8 with me. For by Ephesians 2 8, same man when you're there, Amen. talk real loud for the folks that couldn't make it. Amen. Amen. For by what? By grace, grace. are you Amen. saved Amen. through Jesus. faith and not of yourselves. Amen. So it doesn't matter how you think about it. What you think and what you feel is completely irrelevant. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So grace was released. Grace has to be received by your heart, not your head. Grace always walks in truth, so where there's more truth, there's more grace. And grace will move so that you can understand truth. Grace for grace. Did you hear that? Yes. And by that grace released from God, before you even knew God, you're able to receive that grace and get saved by that grace, and then grace increases. Amen. Because you understand truth. You shall know the truth. truth. And then the grace will set you free. Let me put it to you this way. Once you know the truth of what really happened on the cross, and you know that, the grace of God in its fullness, what took place on the cross, then you get free. Amen. Amen. So the truth sets you free, and the grace already finished work. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Lord. Grace for grace. More, you, you accept truth, you understand the grace, and that grace causes you to walk in more grace. Yes, Jesus. Instead of a, instead of a, Saved child of God, oppressed by sickness, I understand the truth of the full redemptive work, and that grace causes me to accept the truth, and now that truth opens up my understanding to walk in more grace of divine healing. Mm, hallelujah. Thank Amen. You, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you getting that? Amen. So we're saved, delivered, set free, and on a course of liberty by grace. But on this course of liberty and freedom, you've got to look for truth because that releases the grace. And Amen. you've got to let grace have its work because that lets truth start working. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Father, show them 
that you're in me, I'm in you, they're in me, they're, we're in them. And then you go, what? <laughs> it's all one. Hallelujah. Grace and truth, it's all one. Grace for grace, it's all one. It's God. The more you try to figure that out in your head, the more you have a problem with real grace. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. So grace is given. Grace, number two, grace is must be received. Number three, grace saves. Amen. Yeah. Romans chapter 2. And we're going to look at verse 8. Romans 2 8. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. 324. I'm looking at the wrong place. Romans 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 24. Amen. <clears throat> Let's back up to verse 23. For all, say all. All. I was talking to a Muslim the other day that stood there straight face, looked at me, talking in the hallway of the hospital. And I was talking to another Christian, and I asked him, are you, I already knew he wasn't a Christian, but I asked questions. You know God will ask you questions to set you up? Amen. Amen. He'll ask you questions so that your own answer sets you up to be corrected. Amen. <laughs> so now what do you see? Or, well, I, I see an olive tree. And here we go. Here, thus begins the lesson. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm standing here talking to a Christian, looking at this other black brother that I knew already by the Spirit wasn't a Christian, but I asked him a question to set him up. I said, are you a Christian? He goes, no, I'm a Muslim. I already knew that. Right. I said, well, God loves Muslims. And he said, no, 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 I know. Jesus died for Muslims too. Oh. <laughs> and then I started working on him and witnessing to him. And this man stood right there, looked at me and said, I never lie, never steal, never cheat, never looked at a woman with lust. There's no reason for me to repent. No way. That shows you how rejecting truth stops grace. Boom. If you believe a lie, buy into the lie, and hang on to the lie, you'll never let grace have a work in you. Right. Wow. Amen. Lord. This man wasn't kidding. Have you ever stole anything? No. Not even a pencil from work. You didn't take it home and say, "Oh, that's a work from pencil. That's a work uh, or pencil from work, and I need to take it back." But you never did. No. Have you ever looked at a woman and said, my, I'd like to have sex with her. I'd like to sleep with her. No. Have you ever looked at a man and said, I'd like to sleep? No. Have you ever told a lie? No. Not even a little lie. No. Man stood there, looked me right straight in the face, and denied ever sinning. Amazing. He's not the only one, but it's very pre prevalent in Muslims. Yes. Oh, yes. A lot. And the other guy that was with me, <laughs> who, who was a friend of his, I had to call him and go, you're lying right now. He, he, you're lying to the preacher. You're lying. I said, brother, to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but this guy never was, he was confessed to himself. He had no need of a savior. He was without a sin. Wow. Wow. Glory, Glory to God. Glory to God. Verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen? Being justified freely. Not by how much you pray, not to trips to Mecca, not to, but by, by pilgrimages, pilgrimages to the Vatican. Nothing you can do can get you saved and right with God. Yes. Watch. But justified freely by Grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, and I like to add in Christ Jesus alone. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So the grace of God 
the truth of God. See how they walk together? First truth. All have sinned and come to it. All have sinned and come short. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of the glory of God. Or God's glorious right standing. There's the truth. We're all sinners. Now that truth will unlock your need for grace. I can never stand in front of a holy God. Right? And that allows grace to flow. That you can be justified freely by His grace through that redemptive work on the cross, the full finished work of grace on the cross. Truth unlocks that. That come to Jesus and you can have eternal life. Truth comes. Truth received. Unlocks the opportunity for grace to work. Amen. Not Hey, we're saved by grace, block out truth. Right. Are you starting to see where the imbalance is at? Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Grace reveals there's sin in my life. There's times God showed me sin that I wasn't even aware was sin at the time. And I'm going to give you another little nugget of truth in Revelation. Terry, all you young sons of, of, of God, sons of the faith that are tied into me by the Spirit, every level of God's promotion is going to rely... Re the more extreme the call, the more extreme the requirements. The more you want God to be seen in you, the more or less of you is going to be allowed to live. So what you can get away with now, sitting in the first row as a baby Christian, going into your first level of ministry, a bunch of stuff's got to be left behind. Because the truth is, the stuff that you like to do hinders you from being able to walk in harmony with God. Amen. It does. Then the next level of ministry, you're going to have to leave more of you behind. So the more anointing you want to walk in, the more personal presence of God you want in your life, the more you've got to be willing to let die and sacrifice out of your life. Amen. So you've got to be open more and more and more. And God will only reveal certain things, give you the truth that you can handle at the level you're at. Hallelujah. Amen. I've told you this before. I had a friend of mine. Uh, anointed of God, very powerful man of God, <clears throat> a, a person given over to uh, visions and miraculous manifestations. When he was a teenager, he used to love basketball. And he would play and shoot baskets hours a day. He was just, he, and folks, that's very common. You, you, I, I know people, you, you take them to the mall, they're going to walk through the mall with a basketball in their hand. I'm not being funny. It's extremely true. They go to school and sit it under their, their, their chair. Our young team, though. But every time they look for it, they're consumed with the love of shooting baskets. And this kid was just, he just loved shooting baskets all the time. He spent hour after hour. And, and as he started entering into the first phase in, in, a, in an infancy stage of his ministry where signs and wonders were happening and healings were taking place and and that people were beginning to invite him to churches to minister, God said, you need to put that away. Well, is basketball a sin? Is having a basketball a sin? Is shooting a hoop a sin? No. But if you say no to God to hang on to it, now you're in sin. Right. Amen. Amen. So he's standing here enjoying something. To his understanding, he doesn't have the truth. This is keeping him from the deeper things of God. Right. But truth reveals to him, if you don't say no to that, it's going to become a sin. And grace won't cover that. Amen. So he said no to it, and then grace allowed him to go further with God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let me ask you a question. If, the, if God initiates something in his life, a visitation to say, that's coming between me and you, and you say, well, it's not a sin, so I can do it anyway, and God withdraws... How much more truth is God going to show me? No more. So now my my grace has become, as far as I'm going to walk, and now I'm in sin claiming grace. Jesus. And God's grace is so wonderful, he'll put up with that for a while. He'll even revisit you a few times and see if you're going to change your mind and repent. He'll bring truth to you. That's coming between us. I'm just using this as an example so you don't think 
God's climbing in anybody's living room. Because I know she ain't a basketball star. I know he ain't. He can't jump. Well, <laughs> maybe about that dog. <laughs> now, you want to see Tony jump? Wave food up around the ceiling. It's amazing how high he can jump. See, grace is going to protect me from the wrath here. Praise God. So, God, and God's done this in my life, and almost, you know, I hate to say this, but every step I've taken with God, I've either been stupid or rebellious. I'm just being honest with you. I look back now and say, I've wasted so much time being a knucklehead. God, why couldn't I see then what I know now? I could have redeemed so much time, but this gets so strong of a hold on us, and we get so deluded in our self-exalted opinion of us and how smart we think we are. And even when I've said no to God, He's He's waited, He's come back. But why? Initiated another visitation. That's grace. Here we go. God starting something in my life, even though right then I don't even deserve it. That's grace. Amen. Son, you need to put that away. I want to take you someplace you can't go right now. Well, I might. Walks off. Doesn't sit. I'm not thrown to the wolves. He hasn't disowned me. I'm saved by grace. But for that grace to continue, and flow, and we're going to look at that in just a minute. I've got to start saying yes to grace's revealing of truth so that I might stay in grace and increase in grace. Amen. Amen. That's good teaching, folks. Amen. Particularly if you want to do anything for God. Amen? Amen. What you can get away with right now, I guarantee you, if you're going to continue to walk with God, a year from now, you're going to have to either going to have to. There's, there's going to be at least three things you're going to have to leave behind this year, or greatly reduce in your life. Amen. 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 And that's not that's not a rebuke. That's just a fact of, of the way the kingdom is. Less of me, more of him. Amen. 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 All right. So we're just we, grace is given. Grace is received. We're justified by grace. Now look at chapter 5. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 5. Glory be to God. And I want you to look with me at verse 2. Now let's just start at 1. Therefore, because <laughs> we left off being justified, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace. Peace. Oh, how come so many Christians are tormented? How come so many Christians are tormented? How come so many brothers and sisters you know as full as much turmoil as the people without a covenant with God? Because they've done something with something's wrong with the grace. Are you ready? Watch. See, because listen, you can tell yourself all you want, but your spirit man, the real you that's in harmony with him will never be at ease inside of you until you get in truth. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, it's by grace. I'm saved by grace. And at night, by yourself, without the crowd staring you in your face, you're tormented because you know you're not accepting truth. Amen. Amen. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's another manifestation of grace. Grace leads you into the truth. I didn't know at that cross all the anger of God stopped against me, and he's at peace with me. So you grow in that full work of grace as truth reveals it to you. And then they can show you more of the grace you already got. Amen. There's people preaching at pulpits that God's going to kill every, every one of you from Sunday to Sunday. Now, I preach hard, and I preach forceful, and I'm very direct about growing up and giving God 100% because he gave you 100%. But I ain't never, you've never heard me say God's going to blast your butt into hell for that. <laughs> Ever. Praise God. That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 2. By whom, the peace of God through Jesus Christ, by whom also 
we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. The only reason you're serving God today is because you're walking in the grace of God. Grace, listen, I can look back now and see a hundred different ways God saved my life when I was completely ignorant that God was moving in my life. God caused me to stand because I was serving Him to the level that I knew, but the attack was beyond the level of my wisdom. You're going to look back and say, God saved me there, God saved me there, God saved Oh, have you ever heard people say something told me not to get on the plane? Yes. Grace. Yes, hallelujah. And in your lack of wisdom, you say, well, it was intuition. Wisdom says, no, that right. wasn't the grace of God talking yes. to you right. while you were a sinner hallelujah. trying to give you another day of life to accept him and walk in truth. Hallelujah. See how that works? Amen. So you're standing right now. You're alive right now. You're serving God right now because grace is given. Yes, That's right. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, that's good. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Amen. Now look over at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So grace was given. Grace is received. We're saved by grace. We're justified by grace. And we stand by grace. Now, the more you get into grace, the less you're going to see this hallelujah, what's it to you, I get saved and plopped down mentality. Are you starting to see that, church? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 15, look at verse 1 with me. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord. I've already tapped into this. I have a habit of jumping ahead of my notes because it just starts gushing out of me, Amen. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Amen. It's the gospel that told you you're a sinner that needs to be saved by grace. And then that grace keeps working and causes you to stand after you're saved, not fall into sin every five days. Amen. Amen. Not get prematurely killed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm standing with God by grace. Yes, Lord. And what do we do? Well, I've I'm, I'm, I'm done it because I'm a, I'm a powerful man of God. No, you're, we're going to look at that too. Yes. Grace causes me to stand with Jesus, stand for Jesus, and keep living with Jesus. Mm -hmm. The only reason we're here is grace causes me to let the gospel of Jesus Christ walk in me and keep me standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. Amen. Verse 2. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. What's that tell me? <laughs> now, I'm not, listen, don't get all nervous, because I haven't met a whole bunch of people that fall into this category. Let me read it again. <clears throat> well, you can read anything you want into it. I know what it's saying. I just want to let it germinate inside your heart for a while. Moreover, brethren, who's he talking to? Us. Say Christians. Christians. <laughs> I declare unto you, who? Christian, Christian. The gospel which I preached unto you, Christian, which also you have received, Christian, you had to receive it, and wherein you stand, Christian, by which also you were saved, Christian. He's not talking to sinners, is he? No. Are you getting that clear now? Are you getting that? Watch. By which you were also saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Now you just make a little side note right there. What saved doesn't mean always saved. Amen. Not that if you sin, you lose it. But you can come to a conscious rejection of God. I've met very, 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 very. As a matter of fact, in 35 plus years of ministry, I might have met one or two people that I knew were truly saved. And you're always going to get somebody to say, well, they weren't saved in the first place. That's not what this said. Because he's talking to who? Christians. Brethren. 
And he said, the condition is, if you keep believing what I preach to you. I know God, I know he was saved, and he converted to Islam. Then that scripture kicks in, having once tasted of the goodness of God, and going back, there is no, no more grace for you. You don't trample underfoot the holy things of God on that cross. Amen. You don't go play with other religions. Amen. Well, it's all a form of truth. No, it's a lie. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you understand, folks, statistically, who, now, you're, you're not going to like this, and I don't really, I'm sorry if that, well, I don't even, I'm not even sorry if that offends you. Mormonism is a cult. Amen. It just is. It's not. It's not. It's got Christian stuff titled all over it, but it plainly, right in the Book of Revelation, says if you take anything from this Bible or add anything to this Bible, let him be accursed. Not some kind of a okay Christian. So when you have the Book of Mormon, the pearls of wisdom, and the Bible, you're walking in a curse. You're not saved. I don't care how much you tell yourself you are. Amen. But you know who their number one converts are? Baptists. Baptists and Catholics. Catholics are number one, Baptists are number two. They Most of the people they went into this darkness is from so-called Christian churches. Because they stopped believing. Amen. And thought there was something out there God was holding back. That sounds like the apple in the garden to me. Uh -oh. Amen. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That's right. Wow. Well, I got news for you, child of God. They stay in that long enough, they'll lose their salvation. God will even allow them to dabble in that nonsense for a while and keep calling them back to the cross. But when they say, there's, there's a settling, and God said, I will not always contend with man. I'll argue with you, and I'll wrestle you, and I'll try to keep you. But once you go, no! And God knows it's a no, and you know you're saying no, and you want to settle it with a no. He says, okay, I'm never going to talk to you. Let the sinner stay a sinner forever. Let the unclean stay unclean forever. Let the righteous stay righteous forever. No more arguing. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. If you continue believing. Oh, my, 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 my. Watch. Now, that's just a little rabbit trail. Don't play with grace. For I, verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. Remember we started this with you got to receive. And then that starts your life. Amen? Hallelujah. That which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, that's Peter, and then the twelve. And that he, he was seen above five hundred brethren at once. Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, and it wasn't in secret. He visited all of the apostles, and five hundred people in Jerusalem said, I saw him walk in the streets alive. Jesus. And he goes on to say, the better part of those people are still alive while I'm writing this epistle. Glory to God. Well, I go look at verse 6. I was jumping ahead of myself. After that, he was seen above 500 at once, of whom the greater part remain or are still alive unto this present, but unto the present, unto right now. But some have fallen asleep. Some have just went ahead and died and gone on to heaven. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also. As of one born out of due season. Now watch very closely. For I am the least of the apostles that am not worthy to be called an apostle. It says meet the King James. Watch, watch, watch. Because I persecuted the church. Oh my Jesus. Now you know, ain't no good sin. There's no good sin. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I've got brothers in the Lord that went out and committed adultery. God still loves them. They're still serving God. 
I got brothers in the Lord that watch pornography. I mean, they wrestled with it over the years, but God never gave them up. They're still walking with God, and God still loves them. Yeah. Right? I got brothers that, and I'm just going to deal with the brothers. We'll leave the sister out of this. That that had that had stolen stuff. Stop stealing. God still loves them. They're going on with God. But every time somebody has attacked, watch. Every time somebody has attacked the church that I was pastoring, they died. You can do all kinds of sin out in the pews. If you ever stick your finger at a man of God and curse him or come against the church that God's called him to build, you are in danger. Paul even said, turn them over to hell for the destruction of their flesh that their soul might still get saved. Because if they stayed in it, they'd lose their soul too. So don't tell me once saved, always saved. The two times, I, I'm thinking right off the top of my head, one young man, 25 years old, laughed me in, at me in my face, mocked me, got up, walked out of my office. Within 24 hours, he was dead. And I had told him, I said, if you don't repent right now in front of me and your wife and God, you're not going to live a week. <laughs> you, this is not, so I ain't listening to this crap. Gets up and walks out. The very next night, he was decapitated. They found his head in the backseat of his car on the I'm not saying that it's on me. I'm telling you, you better take note of this. When Paul said, man, I was a loose the apostles. Why? Because I persecuted the church. That, that's so serious with God. All you people, oh, you don't got to go to church. Church is obsolete. Church doesn't do nothing for them. You better watch your mouth. Jesus said, I will build the church. Well, that's us. Well, okay, who are you deaconing for? Are you sitting in your living room on your sofa taking up an offering? We're getting all this in governments. You got an usher in your house? Moses' New Testament is talking to the church and how to do church right. How to be the church. Amen. Every time somebody has attacked the church, I was pastor, maliciously just to hurt me, Come against God's people, the church, they've died. It was so serious that when Paul's riding on the road to Damascus, getting ready to persecute another group of Christians that were having church, Jesus said, I've had enough of this and visited the boy in person. Who are you, Lord? I'm Jesus, who you are persecuting when you touch the church. Every time you've locked them up, you've locked me up. Every time you've stoned them, you were stoning me. Every time you kicked and beat them, you were beating me. You're kicking against me. Oh, hallelujah. He takes it very personal. Amen. You better Amen. read this stuff and read it with an open heart, not with a head that says, I know that. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, first, where were we? Verse 7. And after that, he was seen to James, verse 8. And then the last, he was seen to me as one out of, born out of time. For I am the least of the apostles that am, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. In his eyes, he knew the, the, the grossness of that sin. I'm not, I don't even, I don't even, I'm not even worthy to be walking around using the same title as these great men. So you got to understand where his heart was at when he goes on to say the next part. I was the chiefest of sinners. I hurt and murdered God's people. I afflicted Jesus himself. And he, he's called me to apostleship. And I, I'm afraid to even use the title compared to these wonderful, awesome, holy men of God I used to chase and try to kill. Do you understand where he's at in his mind and in his heart? Does that sound greasy to you at all? No. Does it? No. Now watch. Verse 9. I'm not worthy to be even to, because I persecuted the church of God. Verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And by that grace which was bestowed upon me when I did not deserve it because I was the worst sinner of all of them. It was not given to me in vain. But I labored more abundantly than them all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. 
Pastor Tony, roll out. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. Hello. Hello. When I say by grace, nothing changes. Right. Grace is not without effect. It makes something out of you. Amen. It doesn't allow you to stay an old, dirty sinner. Playing games with sin, calling grace as a title. Amen. Here's a man that knew I'm the cheapest of sinners, but I'm an apostle today because of grace that I allowed in my life. And that grace causes me to stand and become something for the glory of God, not stay in my sin. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 It's affected me. And it's effective in me. And it changes me. And yeah, you don't have to judge me. You can't judge me. Guess what? Paul judged himself. Amen. And God could work with that when he was in truth. The truth is, I need you, God. That's right. Yes, Lord. And I don't want to use grace as a title to be a nothing, going nowhere, bringing no glory to God. You said grace. I acknowledge I need work. Now work on me and I'll say, yes, Lord, by grace, make something out of me. Grace came to do a work in you, to the glory of God. Amen. Now, am I twisting the scriptures? No. No, and he started that out by making it real clear. If you think you can just grab grace, live any way you want for the rest of your life, and stay in sin, go on to you. Because you've got the chiefest of all sinners preaching to you. And the only reason I'm an apostle is because that grace worked a work in me. Amen. And changed me and jerked me by the, up out of the slack. So severely did God work in me by grace, he smote me blind. To get my brain to shut up and sit out so he could start having grace in me. Amen. Whew. Glory to God. Now look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Start wrapping it up. Can I have a few more minutes? Amen. Amen. My watch says 415. Is that right? I don't, want to, I don't want to look at that wrong again. Am I correct? Yes. All right. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 3. Are you ready? Amen. Glory to God. Look at verse 9 with me. Well, let's back up to verse 6. I have planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. Now, if you really want to break that down to the absolute total truth, God planted, God watered, God gave the increase. I am what I am by the grace of God. Just, come, just as I am without a plea. That's true. You can come to God exactly the way you are. But grace is not intended to leave you that way. It's intended to make you what God created you for. And it's to his ultimate glory. Amen. 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 And it's on grace's schedule, not yours. Well, I don't want to go there yet. Well, guess what? If grace brings truth and addresses it, God wants to take you there now. Yes. Uh -oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have planted a Paul's water. God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planted anything, neither is he that watered, but God that giveth the increase. Now, he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Grace is in there absolutely, totally involved, but he's still expecting you to get up and work. Grace is never an excuse for God to do everything for you. Amen. Well, God wants to change me. He'll change me. I'm saved by grace. No. Grace will change you. Amen. Amen. Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. We are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to... To the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. 
Amen. Amen. So what's that tell you? By grace, God makes you a worker. A preacher. God's grace is geared. Well, God's grace, the function of grace is always to bring you into the purpose of God. The purpose of God is always a work of the kingdom. Did you hear me? Amen. Grace causes you to stand while God's doing the work in you. Grace causes you to stand and survive all the fiery darts of hell while God's doing the work in you. Grace causes you to be in a place where God can work a work in you to become what you could never do if you ever wanted to. And it's always for kingdom purpose. It's always for kingdom work. I am what I am. I'm a pastor, preacher, apostle, and prophet of God by grace. Hallelujah. God got me here. Amen. In the, beyond the thousand times I failed him and and flopped on my face and deserved to be left in the dust, grace caused me to get up and stand. To keep going toward the purpose of the kingdom, to live a life that brings glory to Jesus. Amen. Not stay back like I was, still smoking dope when I got saved. Right. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thanks, hallelujah. Titus chapter 2. Very familiar scripture if you go to this church. Ties in beautifully. Are you ready? All the way to the back of your Bible. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I gotta look for it because this this isn't my normal best friend Bible. This is my second best friend Bible. Titus chapter 2, look at verse, very familiar, verses 11 and 12. For the what? Grace of God. Say it again. Grace, Grace of God. God. What's the subject matter here, church? God's grace. Th thank you, Bree. What's, yeah. the, what's the subject of conversation? The grace of God. Amen. That's what he's talking about. For the grace of God that brings salvation, we already covered that, we're saved by grace, has appeared to all men while the whole world was lost in sin, Peace on earth, goodwill toward man. God got up off of his throne and said, Jesus, go be born of a virgin and start the process of redemption for this lost, dying world. God was loosing grace while we were completely oblivious to him. Amen? All that's contained right here in the first line. Amen? Amen. For the, God, the grace of God which brings salvation has appeared to who? All men. Verse 12. Teaching us. It appeared, it's visited, and now grace does what? Teaches. Teaches. Uh -oh. Grace teaches us that denying ungodliness, everything that's not godly, grace will tell me, in truth, you need to get rid of that. Yes. <laughs> that's not condemnation, that's conviction and truth. Well, you can't judge me. Grace is supposed to judge you. That's wrong. Not beat you up, but clearly point it out. You need to stop that. Let me ask you a question. You go, I'm a pastor, right? I go over to, uh, to Tony's house. Now, listen, you two, please. This is an example. It's not real. It didn't happen. It's never going to happen. So all you people that have ministries are doing nothing but repeating stuff out of context to keep people watching your show, just turn it off. You're about to spread a lie. Amen. This is an example that never happened. Amen. Amen. As a pastor, I'm going to do a pastoral visit. I go up to McKinney, Texas, knock on the door of Pastor Tony and Teresa, and I hear cussing and banging and things breaking, and I'm going, oh, my Lord, do I have the, the right house? Yeah, that's the right house. That's the right house number. Oh, 
and screaming, and oh my God. And I open the door just to look in, see if maybe there's burglars or something. And here's Pastor Tony just slapping Teresa for all he's worth. And I said, brother, you're a Christian. You need to stop that. Oh, grace, Pastor. See you at church Sunday. Oh, that's so foolish. Really? How many Christians are you talking? Blatant sin said, you can't judge me. I'm saved by grace. May as well be slapping their wives. Yeah. Amen. Now, it's going to be a process, and it's going to be as you receive truth, God will keep teaching you. Grace teaches me I need to stop that start this. Grace teaches me I need to start that and stop that. Grace teaches me I do, we need to do more of that and less of this. Grace instructs me how to be a person that lives a life glorifying Jesus Christ. By starting to first, grace will first teach me deny ungodliness. Am I reading that out of context? No. Nope. It teaches you, one, denying ungodliness, two, and worldly lusts. Now here's, here's a worldly lust that almost no preacher in America is ever going to preach to you about. You want to hear the revelation of that? Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Are you ready? Amen. Gluttony. Amen. They'll tell you, you better stop smoking. You will bobsled your way to hell. You better stop beating your wife. Tell them, God, don't act like that. You're slapping Jesus. Look at that. Can't be stealing. You, you better stop that. You're going to blast hell wide open. You hear all those phraseologies. And the guy's 550 pounds because he can't stop stuffing food in his mouth. Amen. Matter of fact, every Sunday we have chicken lunch fellowship at church. Woo, I can't smoke or cuss or run with people that do, but I can sure eat. No, that scripture says denying worldly lust. Yes. It's called gluttony. It's listed in the work of the flesh. Amen. The favorite sin of Pentecostals. How many preachers ever going to stand up and say, you need to stop being a fat body? That doesn't glorify God. Jesus. Amen. Why? Because those fat bodies won't come back and occupy two seats in your pew anymore. That was a joke. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now I'm going to have to get two new people to replace that one fat body. <laughs> It'd be all right if you could make them tithe twice. <laughs> Like they do in the church, or they do on the airlines. You go sit here, you got to pay for two tickets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but if you could get them to die twice, take up their response and the view would be okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, actually, after the fellowship, you're going to eat too much chicken anyway. You, you need to be tithing more, pay for that. But see, it gets silly. Amen. Amen. You never hear anybody talking about eating too much, as I said. No. Jesus. When's the last time you ever heard a message on eating too much? Put you in a place of sin. No. So we deny the truth of the word, and grace can't come in and convict us and say, You're going to die early of cholesterol and hardening of the arteries if you still stop violating the scriptures and take care of yourself. And I'm not just I'm playing about fat bodies, but there's a lot of very skinny gluttons. Very sinful eaters that look like skin and bones. And they stand around, I'm just blessed. I can eat anything I want. I never get a pound. Doesn't mean you're supposed to eat everything in the barn. God's grace is helping with that. Yes, Lord. Amen. You're probably one of them. Got a metazzle and you can just throw stuff in, and all the fat bodies going to say, I wish I could eat like that. But you're no different in the spirit. Yes. Jesus. Gluttony is, a, is, is something you do, not how you look. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Amen. Teaching us denying ungodliness, worldly lust, we should. Okay, so that tells me that grace is going to start saying, you should start doing something. Mm -hmm. Not just sit there and say, save my grace. Mm -hmm. Something should start. Yes. A, work, a work, a transition should begin. If you're really saved by grace, grace is going to start saying, okay, now let's start this Christian walk. Yes, Lord. Hello. Now we should live so.
soberly, serious lives, not life ate up with party lifestyle. That's in the Amplified. Righteously, godly, in this present world. Now, this is a different generation. You need to get relevant. Well, that's about as relevant as you can get. Right here in this lifestyle generation you're living in right now. Live godly. It's time for you to start growing up. Did I twist that church? No. no. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say amen real, real good. Amen. amen. Let the right world know we got people I'm talking to out there. Because there's a lot of sites out there that say that we're opening our Bibles and they're in their living room by themselves. Just because you got somebody on YouTube says they have a ministry doesn't mean they have a ministry. Yeah. That's one of the things I love about Terry is he goes to the street and takes the church to the world instead of waiting for people to show up. Amen. Oh, that's and my, quite frankly, if you're really walking in a church that's walking in grace, you're going to be doers of the word and not hearers only, didn't deceiving yourselves. You're going to take the healing power of Jesus to work with you. Amen. You're going to take the gospel to work with you. You're going to take the love of Jesus to work with you. You're going to take the word of knowledge to work with you. You're going to take the, 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 the cross of Jesus Christ to the streets, in the Walmarts, on your way to the, to the store and to the mall with you. Because church is you taking what you learn in the building to act it out in the lifestyle you live. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That's grace. Not reshaping, restructuring the church so that nobody's challenged to change. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Brother, what are you eating? Mints. I want one. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. My mouth is getting a little dry and I thought, what? I could use one of them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. What are you going to do with ungodliness? Deny it. Reject it. And I'm hammering on this a little bit because this is the work of grace. Grace visits. Grace was released. Grace visited. Grace has to be received. Grace saves. Grace causes you to stand while grace is teaching you how to change. To become what you are called to become by grace. Yes. Amen. Yes. Are you getting a bigger picture of this grace and the dilemma of why grace is so weird in the, the body of Christ in our generation? Yes, Lord. Because we're in churches where you just come and you feel love and we have great praise and worship and you're never challenged. Right. And you're never stretched and you're never intimidated and, and we try to take the crosses down so you're not convicted. That is the hidden revelation of grace. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Right here on the front of my pulpit. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if that convicts you and that threatens you, that means there's still a demon in you that you have to have out of you by salvation. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. God. Grace, verse 12, teaches us that denying ungodliness. What's grace going to do? TC. TC. Deny that. What that means is this. TC, say no to that eighth twinkie. Yes, Lord. Grace, I can sit there and eat a twinkie. But when none of my preachers have ever preached that overeating is a sin, I'm working on number eight. Grace will kick in. The Holy Spirit will speak and say, that's too much. You need to deny that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't judge me. Grace is going to start teaching you denying worldly things. And boy, you don't hear that no more. So then that leads us up to the last part. Are you ready for this? Amen. Grace teaches to start denying things. Worldly things and ungodly things. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference? 
Look at Pastor. What's the difference between ungodliness and worldliness? Huh? No, it's not. The end result's the same, but it's not the same. Worldly lust doesn't necessarily mean a sin. It's just natural. It's just worldly. It's just carnal. Amen. Okay. Like the kid shooting bastards. Okay. Amen. Ungodliness is a foul mouth, beating your wife, fornicating. That's ungodliness. That's a sin. Right now, that's not a sin. But when grace comes in and says that's too much, you need to deny that, now it becomes a sin. The end result's the same, but the two functions, the two things, Two entities themselves are not the same. There's all kinds of things in the world you're called of God by grace to start saying no to that right now isn't a sin, but it's waiting to become one. And the longer you say, I'd say by grace, God understands, the more sinful it becomes. Now you get it? So now we got entire churches that has used that motto to never change and let God have a full work in them where they cannot endure any sound doctrine at all. And we have entire homosexual churches saying grace. Jesus. And they could have repented early if they would at least acknowledge some truth that if you're a homosexual 20 years ago, you couldn't get married. In the Bible, you still can't. So at best, you're committing continual fornication. So you got to deny fornication, and that will keep you out of homosexuality. Well, we can't have that. I can't say no to my lust of my flesh. So I'm going to have a church, and we're going to rally, and we're going to Washington, and we're going to change the law. And the laws of man do not invalidate the work of grace. Yes. That's right. Oh, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, praise God. Praise God. Galatians chapter 2, we're going to close. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to look at verse 20. He's okay. He'll be all right. Trust me. look about verse 17. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? I just covered that, didn't I? Jesus ain't in it. God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroy, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet it's not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead for nothing. What he's saying is this, if, if I try to do works that bypass the work of God, I'm frustrating the grace of God. In other words, I'm not going to stop drinking, but I'll stop drinking for Lent denominations frustrating the grace of God well you don't have to submit to the grace of God wear special underwear frustrating the grace of God they won't let grace teach you you don't need to do that you need to do this well you can't judge me I'm trying to help you I am what I am by the grace of God if you don't allow grace to have its work in you then you're now in that I, I know you can't tell me I won't receive, and you're taking the things of God as a war shield, fighting the work of grace, frustrating grace to be able to come in and say, stop that, do this, I've got a plan for your life. Amen. Right, right, right. 
Well, I don't need to listen to the Holy Ghost. I can get this stuff done my way. You're frustrated in the grace of God. Look at somebody and say, I do not frustrate the grace of God. I do not, do not frustrate, frustrate the, the grace of God. I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God by denial. Yeah. I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God by willful ignorance. I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God by excuses. Amen. I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God by my opinion. Amen. I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God by collective opinions. Amen. I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God by my preference. Amen. Yeah, I know, but this is how we do it in this church. Uh -oh. Amen. Yeah, I know what the Bible says, but mama, Jesus. Hallelujah. whatever you do, church, whatever you do, all over the world. Obey the truth. Stop frustrating the work that grace wants to do in your life. And become what you're called to be to the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. And the church said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.